I know it's silly. Okay, so, right, so what is common law? Right? Common law is actually natural law, law that we all know, we've all got it written on our hearts, yeah? But it's natural law written down, okay? So, as I said, we all know what it is. It's all based on the Ten Commandments, yeah, from the Old Testament, yeah? We all know what those things are, essentially. Don't do any harm, injury, or loss to people or their property, yeah? And do all you, that you say you're going to do, yeah? So don't defraud anybody, yeah? It's just rules for a harmonious society. That's all it is, yeah? It's literally natural law written down. Now, I've been, uh, I've been sort of challenged by um, some New Ager types who tell me that uh, there is no such thing as absolute right and wrong. But I beg to differ. You know, I give the example of, if you imagine you're at, sitting at a table, you know, having lunch, and the person next to you stands up and walks away, and you notice that they've left their wallet on, on the seat. Okay? Now you've got two choices. <laughs> you can either take that wallet, take it home, see how much you've got, or you can run after the person and give them their wallet back. But if you were to take that wallet to take it home, you'd be going like this, <laughs> making sure that nobody sees you. All right? And then you slip it into your pocket. And when you get it home, you're going to be, you know, you take the money out, but then you'll see all these credit cards are in there. Yeah? Maybe his keys are in there. Maybe there's a picture of his mother, which is probably the only picture of his mother. And all these things of his life that, you know what? You know it's going to hurt him not to have. And you're going to have this little pang of remorse if you're if you're human, yeah? um, and you're gonna you're gonna know you've done something wrong. But on the other hand, if you pick that wallet up and you um, run after the guy, well, first of all, you don't care if anybody sees you. You'd be like, hey, the guy's left his wallet, yeah. And once you run up and give that guy that wallet, right, you will have this great feeling that you've done something right. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. yes. Right. So. So there is no such thing, or, or the, the idea of uh, absolute right and wrong. Yes, we all know it. Yeah, it's written here. Okay. Um, if you break any of these laws, that's what we call a crime. Yeah. Any any actual crime involves an injured party. Right. There's no such thing as a victimless crime. Okay. So any policeman who says you know, you've just committed a crime and there is no injured person, yeah, it's not a crime, okay? Um, I, I say that because the police these days aren't trained to know the difference now. They think anything that comes out of the mouth of a politician is, is law and if you break it, it's a crime, okay? It's not, yeah? There's a difference between an offence and a crime, okay? Um, as I said, crime's always in, involved an injured party. So if you break one of these laws, yeah, you will end up in, in court. Now, what, what you're going to see throughout this talk is that you're going to see evidence of, of what we expect in the real world, yeah, and then what you actually have in where we are, the matrix, the clown world, yeah, <laughs> the the fake world that we live in, yeah. So you look at something and you you see it as one thing, but in reality it's something completely different. So a real court is known as a court de jour, okay. De jour means legitimate, legal, uh, not legal, lawful, yeah. A real court, okay. So in a real court, you're going to find common law. That's the law that's practiced in a real court, okay? Um, that's the law of land, of the land. You've heard that, fr that, that phrase before, the law of the land? Mm. Yeah, that's common law, okay? You'll find somebody who's called a complainant, yeah? He is the injured party. You get the accused, yeah? He's the one accused of doing the injury, <laughs> okay? You get witnesses, first witnesses with first-hand knowledge of the whole situation at hand, yeah? There has to be more than one witness, um, a flesh and blood person. Um, as you'll see um, later on, a camera, a photograph, is not a witness, yeah? Because at the end of the day, 
um, if you're accused of something, you have the right to face your accuser. Okay? So if your accuser is a speed camera, <laughs> well, bring the speed camera in here, I'm going to cross examine it. You know, you can't. You know, it's, it's not a real witness. Right? So you get witnesses, and that comes out of that also comes out of the, the, the Old Testament. That's Deuteronomy 19:15. It's uh, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses shall a matter be, um, be discovered or something like that. Um, you'll also find in a, real, in a real court a jury, 12 ordinary people, and they are the ones who are going to make the decisions in, in, in the case. Not the judge, it's always the jury, okay? And you get the judge. The judge is only acting as a referee. He's got no other power except for you know, keeping proceedings, get, you know, moving along properly, and no arguments and that sort of thing, okay? He has no other power. And the other thing you'll find in the real court is that everyone is speaking real English language, mm -hmm. so that everyone can understand what's going on, yeah. okay? Um, the other part of, uh, of common law, I said it's, com it's natural law written down, there are certain nuances, because the law is so simple, there are certain nuances that aren't really um, adequately covered by the do no harm, injury or loss. So let's take the, the uh, a case of murder, for instance. If uh, somebody gets killed, you know, and you are sort of pictured as being the cause of it, the thing that has to be established in law is something called mens rea, which is uh, intent. Right? There has to be proven an intent to kill. And that's murder. Yeah? If there's no intent, if there's, you know, somebody got killed because of your negligence, yeah. right? well, there's no intent. So, um, uh, in cases, um, a jury would have to sort of figure out, okay, um, what's, what's, what should happen here? Okay? Those cases um, where decisions are made on, on certain topics, they sort of roll into what's called case law. So natural, uh, common law is the you know, straightforward natural law, plus all the cases that have led up to, uh, to the, the, the world we have today. Yeah, all, the, all the decisions that are made you know, in the courts. Okay? So you heard, some of you heard me uh, um, spout uh, Rice versus Connolly in 1966. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? So, so that was a piece of case law that established that you don't have any duty to speak to police, okay? So that piece, that a jury has decided that, so now that, that becomes part of common law, okay? Um, as I said, the jury have the power in, in this court, okay? The one thing that they don't let you know is that the jury has the power to strike down any law the government makes. It's called jury nullification. So if there's a case that, that comes up and the jury decide that the, the law is wrong, <laughs> the jury, just ordinary people like us, can say, you know what, that law is wrong, we're, we're striking it off. And that law disappears. Mm. That's why they don't let us have juries anymore. Yeah, well, because, because the power of, uh, that we have in our hands you know, against corrupt laws. <laughs> Yeah. Anyone has anyone here done jury service? Oh, I was just about to say, did they stop that then? Yeah, I mean, I did jury service when I was about twenty or so. Yeah. Right. No, yeah. No. Nobody's done jury service. No. No. That tells you because no. yeah. you know you're, yeah. it, it, you're supposed to be chosen at random to go and sit, sit on a trial, but mm. hardly anyone does anymore. Well, they I still go on. Like last year. Yeah, they like still. Years ago, yeah. yeah, they still go on, yeah. but it's it's literally you have to bump up um, a uh, you know a case up to the higher courts before you end up with a jury, yeah? So they've, they've um, literally given us a, a totally different um, court system. It's called the court de facto. Mm. De facto means it's what we have. <laughs> it's in place. Yeah. It's there, you know? It's not real. It's not um, legitimate. It's just, it's just what we have, yeah. okay? Um, so in that court, there's no common law. Mm. It's maritime admiral law. Um, Admiralty law, which is the law of the sea, yeah, completely different law system. Okay. Um, also, there's the ever-present crown that's in the court. Usually, it's got a big seal at the top there saying you're in a 
uh, a, a court operated by the Crown. Right? You also have um, somebody who's the defendant. Yeah? Yeah. That defendant doesn't speak. That dependent, uh, defendant can't speak in that system. He has to have a lawyer, a defence lawyer. Okay? Guess who the defence lawyer worked for? The Crown. Okay? Um, you have a prosecution lawyer. Okay? The prosecution lawyer works for the Crown. Right? You've got the judge who also works for the Crown. You've got the clerk of the court who works for the Crown. Yeah? Everyone in that courtroom works for the Crown apart from you. So do you think you're going to get justice in that place? No, you're not. Okay. Um, the language that's used in those courts are a foreign language. It might look like English, it might sound like English, but it's a foreign language. It's called legalese. Again, it's English words that have been redefined to mean something completely different. So we'll get into that in a little while, but, uh, but this is how they trap you with, with deceptive language. You know, the English language is deceptive enough, but when you add legalese on top of it, you, you ha absolutely have no idea what you're doing, okay? So lawful and legal are two different things, okay? Um, lawful is anything that doesn't um, cause harm, injury, or loss to people or their property, okay? So you can do anything as long as you don't harm anybody, yeah? Or, or damage or take property from people. That's it, simple. Leg uh, legal is whatever the government allows you to do, yeah? Two completely different things, yeah? The government shouldn't be able to allow us to do anything or, or uh, dictate to us what we're allowed to do because, you know, as we'll see later, government is our servant, not our master, even though they're acting like they're, you know, we're, we're their slaves at the moment, yeah? They're actually servants of ours, okay? <laughs> so, um, a statute, which is the legislation that uh, governments produce, um, are defined as a legislated rule of society given the force of law by the consent of the governed. Now there should be three things that should stand out to you. Okay? Um, it's a legislated rule of a society. Well, a society is something you have to join. Yeah? What society are you part of? <laughs> Can anyone think of the name of the society you're in? No? Okay. A society, you join it, you get, you get a membership card, yes. you know, you pay dues and stuff, okay? But apparently, you're a member of a society, but we didn't know it, yeah? So these rules are only apply to members of that society. But as I said, we don't even know we're a part of the society, okay? So the next one is the force of law. It's telling you that it isn't law. But it can get the force of law, how? By the consent of the governed, us, okay? We give these statutes the force of law the moment we agree to them, okay? Does everyone understand that, yeah? Um, an example is, look at the road out there, yeah? It's like, you've got houses either side, yeah? It's quite narrow, uh, and there are cars parked on either side, yeah? There may be a school at the end of the road, yeah? So, is it, is it reasonable to drive at 75 miles an hour down that road? No. So, what sort of speed do you think is reasonable to drive down that sort of road? 10 or 20. 20? 20? Yeah, 10 or 20, yeah? Has everyone agreed that that's a reasonable speed? Yeah. Audience participation? Yes. yes. Right, so now, that becomes law to you. You've all agreed that, say, 20 is a reasonable speed for that road. You've made that law between you because you've agreed to it, okay? Now, if you were to go down, down at 75... Continue like old drive. Okay. That, <laughs> that, that would be dangerous. <laughs> 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 Woo! <laughs> 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 so, yeah, okay. Let's yeah. see if you can drive. Yeah. Yeah, if you were to go down there at 65 or something, yeah. right, now you've broken the law because you've agreed that it's safe only to go around about that speed. Sure. And you've broken that, okay? 
So, so these statutes are meant to be kind of um, guidelines of reasonable behaviour. Yeah? yeah. You sh it shouldn't be that if you break it, if you go like 35 down there at 3 o'clock in the morning, right? It's not that, there's no law against you doing that. It's, it's still kind of reasonable to do that at 3 o'clock in the morning. But in this society, if you do that, like you go, go 21 miles an hour and somebody's got a speed camera, gotcha. Yeah? It shouldn't be like that. It's, it's just um, guidelines for reasonable behaviour. But they've morphed it over the years to something else. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, so the point is, if you agree to these, these statutes and stuff, or you confess to be a government employee, then these rules apply to you. Because, again, the society that we're talking about has employees or members, and if you confess to being one of these members, then they apply to you, okay? Um, it's kind of like um, uh, Tesco's. Like, Tesco's has a rule. I think it's Tesco's, it might be another company, but Tesco's has a rule. If, if, if somebody's working on works on a till at Tesco's, they're not allowed to bring their own money to work. They're not allowed to walk into that store with money in their pocket, yeah. right? Because obviously they can, you know, they, can't, they can say, well, did you take that at the till or is that your own money? So they say, right, nobody works on a till can walk in there with, with money. But if you don't work for Tesco's, does that still apply to you? Does that still oh, apply no. to you? Oh. <laughs> okay. No, because you don't work for Tesco's. You're not an employee of Tesco's. Yeah. That rule doesn't apply to you. Yeah. It's only if you, you are an, an employee of Tesco's or you confess to being an employee of Tesco's now that that rule applies to you. Mm. Yeah? You are a sovereign being yeah? one step below the creator. You have the creator at the top, whoever you deem that to be, you exist one step below that creator, right? Collectively, we create government. So government is below us, even though they don't act like it these days, yeah? Right, so, you know, we control government. Government creates fictional entities, lots of fictional entities. Like, anybody wanna name a couple? A fictional entity that government creates. No, let me. The police? No, no, this is more basic than that. Taxpayer, yeah. driver, yeah. resident, uh, yeah. householder. So when you sign up, and you actually do like your driving license and your theory and whatever it is, and you sign up and get papers to get your license, that means then you are now a member and that's why you have to stick to those rules on the road. Yeah, yeah we, we'll come to that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry? <laughs> well, we're coming to that. We're coming to that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so literally, they, the government create these fictional entities, yeah, right? Now, as a, as a sovereign being, one step below the creator, yeah, you have inalienable, inalienable rights, right? You have lots of rights that can't be taken away from you, yeah? Um, the right to travel, right? The, to travel any way you see fit, yeah, anywhere on this earth, okay? You have, you have lots and lots of rights. Right, but if you decide to waive those rights, that's the only way those rights can, can be taken away from you. Yeah, if you if you decide, you know what, I don't want that right. I don't want the right to travel. You can give it up if you like. Mm -hmm. Right, that's the only way that, that rights can be taken away from you. So if you decide, you know what, I want to be a driver. That's uh, one of those fictional entities underneath government. Mm. Government control those entities, mm. right? You give up your right to, to, to travel in order to become a driver. You see that change in status? Yeah? So um, that's the thing about uh, a, a, a driving license, right? A driving license, well, think about it. You think it's a, a certificate of competency. Yeah? Somebody has tested you right, and decided you are you know, fit to drive. When does, when do you ever sign a certificate of competency? Yeah? When do you ever sign that? You don't. The person who's testing you signs it to say, I've tested this person and they're fit to drive. 
but they, they don't get you to sign it. So guess what you're signing? A contract. It's a contract to waive your natural right to travel in favour of this benefit privilege of being something called a driver. You give up all your natural rights to take on the duties of a driver. So what if we give our licences back and say, I don't want this licence? I've already tried that, so I rescinded my driving licence. I sent a letter to the DVLA and said, I understand that I've just I've signed a contract. It's not a, um, a, a valid contract, so I'm rescinding it, and um, you know, I've sent my licence back to them. But to this day, they've still got my licence on record. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, there's, this system is like a fish hook. Mm -hmm. Once it's in there, mm -hmm. you ain't getting that thing yeah. out, yeah? yeah? No matter what you do. So is it better to say for somebody that's going to start learning to drive this year? <laughs> I was going to say, just, uh, just do what I do and not get one. I have one now, by the way, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's, here's, the, got one. <laughs> here's, here's the problem, <laughs> okay? <It's, clears throat> everything I'm saying tonight is all very well, yeah. but, you know, we live in a um, this system that's run by criminals, mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> Literally, it yeah. doesn't matter. The, those are the people running this whole system are like the mafia. Okay, mm -hmm. they um, they're pretending to do everything right yeah. and honestly and justly and everything, but underneath they're not. They, you know, if they they get a chance to separate you from the herd, mm -hmm. right, and uh, do things undercover, they're going to just roll over you. No matter if you're right, if you've got absolute right on your side, mm -hmm. they don't care. They're just going to roll over you. And the point is that because we're all so badly educated in all this, public opinion is going to go with the police yeah. and the courts and not with you because they won't understand what you're doing. No, no, nobody's been taught all this stuff. So they're going to see you as a nutter. And, well, of course you've got to have tax, MOT and insurance. Of course. You know, because they don't know. Yeah? So, so I'm saying, you know, you, we're, we're being conned left, right and centre here, and there's no real easy way to, uh, to, to not be conned, especially now when we've got um, cameras that catch your uh, number plate and, and, and things. Before, you know, um, yeah, you could, but I'm, I'm going get to a, get a sort of bit more into that in a second, so, uh, so hopefully uh, I'll cover that. So, um, uh, okay, so I was saying, yeah, the... Uh, the legal system is all about you agreeing to it. Yeah. That's the key factor to it. You have to agree. And they'll go to enormous lengths to get you to agree. Okay? Um, so it's, it's one of the things they use is word magic. Not just legalese, but in general, word magic. Okay? So if I were to, Jeff, if I was to punch you in the face, right? Punch you really hard in the face, right? Is that a crime? Yes. Yeah, yes, it's harm injury and loss, yeah? Okay. But if I was to say, hey, Jeff, do you mind if I punch you in the face? And you say, yeah, that'd be great. And I'm just, bam. Right? Is that a crime? No, because he agreed to it. Okay. Now, so let's imagine I've just walked in with a beautiful dolly bird. <laughs> okay. And I say, hey, Jeff, I'm, I'm Dave and I, I run a massage service. I'm a master at massage service. Do you know much about massage? Right, well, let me tell you all about it. Yeah? Um, our masseurs, and I point to our body bird over here, yeah? our masseurs, well, they, they apply pressure to the skin when they, we, we find tightness under the skin. Yeah? And, uh, and we, sometimes, you know, we, we, it's quite violent because we, you know, we have to do this chopping motion. Sometimes we have to get our knuckles in there and really just to get rid of that tightness. So have you heard that sort of thing before about masseurs? Yeah, yeah. yeah, so would you, do you, do you mind, um, would you mind having a free service you know, a massage, Dolly Bird back here. <laughs> Would you like to have a free massage, you know, whenever we see any tightness in your body? Yeah, why not? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. Bang. <laughs> right? Well, I, I told you that I was the massage. I didn't say she was. Right? And I just, I just explained to you yeah. a process where I can put my hands on you. Yeah. Violently, because yeah. I just I just saw some tightness on your nose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? God, and that's a facetious example, but it's word magic to get you thinking about something else. Yeah. When in reality, Destruction. I'm I've just got your agreement to do something else to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is what they do. 
Um, the birth certificate mm. is literally um, evidence that you're a government employee. Okay? Your parents, you know, not knowing any better, registered you, or registered your birth. Okay? Now the word register means something else, it's legalese again. Okay? Previously to the birth certificate, <coughs> Um, they would, um, people would register, not register, sorry, record births and deaths and marriages in the family Bible. Like I saw one just the other week, actually, it was a beautiful old Bible, right in the middle of this, this, this book, with these blank pages and, and this, this family lineage was, was detailed in this, in this book. This is what they used to do. The word register means to hand over title ownership of whatever you're registering to whoever you're registering with. Right? So when your parents, and it says on the, <coughs> the, the form, the application form, informant, right? So when your parents inform on you, mm -hmm. right, they actually hand you over to the state. That's why, you know, the state can come in and take your children. Right? Because they literally own them right, according to this birth certificate. Okay? It's evidence that you are one of these fictional entities. Okay? I have a German, I have two German birth certificates because these are real with each other, but I don't have the British birth certificate. So, who does own me? The German government. Okay, so that far away. Yeah, but that's oh, that true. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, for instance, if you're an American, if you're an American, it doesn't matter where you go in the world, they're going to take taxes from you. Yeah, that's us. Yeah. Oh, you, so you still pay taxes in Germany? No, the Germans don't. It's only America and uh, a small African country that tax worldwide income, even if you do not live in the country. Yeah. Right. But I have an American friend and she constantly has to file tax returns with the IRS. Yes. But the Germans don't do that. Neither do the Germans. That's the point. Yeah, the, this is what Americans do. But the point is that they own you, right? They, they believe they own you with this with this birth certificate. So the Americans say, it doesn't matter where you go, it doesn't matter where you work, you're going to pay us money. Yeah? But what I'm, my question is, the British do not own me. I have no British birth certificate. I have national insurance. Well, the British here's, here's the thing. There are no countries anymore. <laughs> there's never been, there's not been countries for a long time. We just believe they are. Yeah. There, there's been a worldwide system uh, in place, but we think they're, they're separate countries. They're not. Yeah. Um, so, uh, where was I? Okay. Um, I don't know if I'm talking I... about register and over form. Oh, All right, yes, yes. So, so yeah, it's it's literally a legal term for for giving away your property. And now, right, you don't, you no longer the mother and father. You are the pair that rents them. What? Parents. Parents. <laughs> okay. Oh. It's, it's it's the same as when you um, you think so. Well, even if you had children in a hospital, right, they will start trying, you know, forcing yeah. you to, to get registered. It doesn't matter if you're married or not. No, okay. but they ask you to go back after to be registered with both names on there, ah, married okay. names, yes. to then have response, both have to say, I don't know. Guess why? We've never done it. Because what do you do with your marriage? Register. You register. You register your marriage. Your marriage is owned by the state. Yeah, you enter a three-way partnership with the state, okay? And the state takes ownership or has a share in the products of that marriage. And that's why it's so hard to get divorced. Yes. Yeah. So can, when you're divorced, they don't, that's it. It's a corporate merger you're entering into, entering into yeah? yeah? So um, so how this came about, right? It, it happened in, um, in, when, in a time when they were actually operating two false flag events. Yeah, the Great Plague, yeah, and the Fire of London. During the Fire of London, right, when, when half of London was burning down, guess what was happening? The government was sitting and they passed a law 
in French so that people didn't understand it, yeah, <laughs> called the Sesta K V Act of 1666. 1666. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So the Sesta K V Act of 1666 basically declared everyone dead. Because their the, the reasoning was, we don't, you know, there's, there's all this death happening, we don't know who's alive and who's dead. So we're going to declare everyone dead. Right? And we, the government, are going to uh, take everyone's share of the country and administer it because we think everyone's dead. They left a provision in there that if you pre um, present yourself by the age of seven to the state, then you could be you could reclaim your say, your share of the country. But they didn't show how to do that. <laughs> Again, and it was in French, so nobody knew what um, what was going on anyway. Right. So they created this thing called the birth certificate. Right. Um, because governments cannot deal with flesh and blood humans, you know, men and women, okay? They can't deal with them, okay? Because they're, they're a, a fictional entity. They can only deal with other fictional entities, yeah? Like corporations. What's the word corporation? Corp Corps. is in the Bodies. dead body. Yeah. Mm. That's what a corporation is. It's a dead entity, mm. yeah? So they created, when they made the birth certificate, Birth certificate represents a dead entity in your name. Okay, so it's your name in all capital letters, yeah. which is not your name. Yeah, it's spelled wrong. They they haven't taught us grammar properly. Yeah, if your name is all capital letters, it's not you. Mm. It's spelled wrong. Okay, just like um, okay, if you spell law with a capital L. Well, that's a proper noun. It means the law. Okay? Hmm. If you spell um, law with a lowercase l, it means rule, directive, um, preference, you know, um, not the law. Yeah? It's a common noun. Okay? But again, we're not really taught properly about, about grammar. So when you see your name in all capital letters, it's not you. Right? It's a corporation that the government created in your name, okay? And every time you pick, you open a letter, or you get a letter that's a bill or anything <laughs> official, you'll notice it will be in all capital letters. Mm. Same now. Now that um, the, uh, you know, free men on the land and all that were started to notice that, ah, they're all in capital <laughs> letters, they, they started putting in mixed case. <laughs> but they add a title. Yeah. Mister. Yes. Yeah. Which right. is well, it, that, it doesn't have to be. It's a title. So, has every, anybody wondered why you know what, what the word Mister is? <laughs> no. Okay. Well, let's, let's let's step back a second. Before the age of seven, you had a different title. Do you know what that was? Master. 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 Yeah. Children are always as master. Exactly. Always but master. think about what that means. A master can't be arrested. A master can't be fined. So as soon as you get to 18, it changes to... No, it's seven. seven. Oh, seven. Yes. So masters are, are masters. So they can't be fined, they can't be arrested, they can't be, um, you know, imprisoned or anything. They're masters. So is that saying you can get a master's degree or...? No, 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 that's the same <laughs> but, but this is a title that's uh, applied to us, yeah? So uh, until the age of seven, you're a master. As soon as you get to that age, right, you become a mister, okay? Yeah. Yeah. So again, we don't know what the word mister, because all we see is the uh, abbreviation, MR, yeah? Yeah. yeah? But if you look it up, the word mister, M-I-S-T-E-R, right, means somebody who's engaged in mystery. Mm -hmm. M-I-S-T-E-R-Y, yeah? If you look up the word mystery, it means a trade or a business, cool. yeah? Again, government can only deal with commerce and trade, yeah? So you become, when you take on that title, you become a business, somebody at, um, working in a business, yeah? Um, the, the system doesn't really regard women very highly, okay? <laughs> So, what's your title before you get married? Miss. What does that mean? 
Ignore. Missing. <laughs> Ignore. Forget. Don't regard. Miss. Miss it off. Miss out. <laughs> yeah? So when you get married, what do you become? Misses. Have you ever thought of what that word means? Well, add a, an apostrophe between the Misters. R and S. Oh, Misters. <laughs> belonging, belonging to the company. Belonging, belonging to the trade. Buttons. Well, that's, that's, that's a made-up one, actually, <laughs> because, because of the feminist movement. But oh, okay. The system doesn't really um, regard that. But miss, it's not Mrs., it's Misters. Belonging to the mystery, belonging to the trade or company. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Um, so, yeah, uh, there's a lot of this stuff that we, we literally just assume we know something about, but we're just bumbling through this world, yeah? yeah. Um, so this, this title, this, this um, we call it a straw man, yeah? This, this entity that they create, this corporation, is like your piece, your, your piece in the game of uh, Monopoly, yeah? You can't physically jump on the Monopoly board and walk around it, yeah? You have to have a piece, whether it's the old boot or the racing car or something. That, that, that corporation, that mister, that, that, that a straw man is your playing piece to play this game of modern maritime admiralty law or this, uh, this, this system that we find ourselves in. So it's all about consent, as I said. It's all about consent and it's all about contracts. Okay, so let's have a look at this legal, legalese thing. As I said, it's a, it's a foreign language, right? Looks like English, sounds like English, but it's every single word in that language has been redefined so you don't know what you're really talking about. Yeah, it's a language that only lawyers are trained to interpret. That's why you need a lawyer in their system because you have no idea what's being said in that, in that setting. Um, so I've mentioned register, yeah? I mentioned a person. A person is, you know, you think you're a person, you're not. A person means corporation. Yeah? So if you say you're a person, in court, you're admitting to being that corporation. Okay? Remember I said about um, taking on the identity of a, of a, um, a government-created entity? Yeah? It's like an overcoat. Okay? The government... And the legal system can do anything they want with this overcoat because they created it. Yeah? If you put that overcoat on, if you take it on and, and say, oh yeah, that's me. Right? You put that overcoat on, now it can grab that overcoat with you in it, throw it in jail, or fine it, or do anything they want to it with you in it, you know, taking responsibility for it. Okay? So the trick is not to put that overcoat on. Yeah. Okay? So, um, so a person, again, is not you, it's, it's this fictional straw man character. I, um, I, didn't, I didn't mention the word identify. You know, we think it just means to recognise or something like that. Yeah. No, it means to make the same as. So again, sovereign being, yeah? If you make this yourself the same as, or identify yourself, you make yourself the same as one of these fictional entities. So when a policeman stops you and says, you know, you're driving, you know, or travelling in your car, yeah. and the policeman stops you and says, uh, can, can I see your uh, licence, right? <coughs> as soon as you show them your licence, now you've, you've identified yourself as a driver. So you're, not, you're no longer uh, um, travelling on the, on the roads, yeah, <coughs> and, you know, um, exercising your natural right to travel. Now you've just confessed to being a driver, now you've got rules to follow, okay? So that's what identify means. The word summons, we think we know that what that means. It's some obligation to appear at court. Yeah. The word summons means invitation. So you're just being invited to come to court. Though it sounds in your mind that you have to do it. Along with similar lines, the word must actually is synonymous with may. So when you see on, a, on some um, official piece of paper, it says, you must do this. Yeah. You may if you want. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, again, it just, it's trickery. It's just getting you to think, oh, I've got an obligation to do this. Um, the one that most people have uh, heard of is understand. Yeah? yeah. So when a policeman says, I'm, I'm charging you for going 60 and a 30, do you understand? Hmm. Well, most people think they're saying, 
Oh, do you comprehend the, the words that are coming out of my mouth? Yeah. That's not what they're saying. They're saying, do you stand under? Do you agree to be bound by? Do you consent to these charges? And you say, yeah, I understand. <laughs> okay, yeah. you consented. Yeah. Thanks yeah. a lot. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, the word submit, when you submit a, a form or something, oh, yeah. mm. it means to bend to somebody's will. Mm. When you apply for something, it literally means to beg. And the assumption is that when you're begging some, something from somebody, you know what you're begging for. Yeah. Okay? So, when you submit an application for registration, yeah. you are bending to somebody's will and begging them to take the something that belongs to you. <laughs> That's what you're doing. Excluding this cult. Excluding this cult. <laughs> <laughs> So let's look at it. Um, let's look at uh, um, uh, like a driving license again. Again, we have the right to travel in any way we see fit. Yeah, the driving license is a contract that you're signing, waiving your right to travel. Yeah. Um, so we. Uh, yes. Yeah, so when you register your car, so you register your car, you're handing that car over to the DVLA. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what do you become when you do that? Keeper, yeah, not the owner. Right, yeah. The DVLA is now the owner. Yeah, yeah. yeah? you're just keeping it for for them. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> while while they own it. Yeah, um, the same thing happens when you register your child. You don't be, become the uh, you're no longer the mother and father anymore. You are the pair that rents them. Mm. Pair rents. Mm. Sorry, Don. So when you register your car, you take on the, the duties that, um, that go along with being the keeper. Yeah? But this is why now the old keeper now has to do it themselves and has to do it online because you can't get away now with saying, I don't want to register it. Because they used to give you the whole form, didn't they? You'd do it yourself and just forget to send it we off. We have to go to the... No, they, they keep it and they have to do it themselves now. Unless they see? get the fine for yeah. not... Yeah. Well, this is the thing, they're trying their best to move everything online mm -hmm. so it hides all the real truth yeah, about what's going on. And now you've got like this layer of the internet where you, all you can do is press a button or tick a box or something. Yeah, you don't know, goes, you you don't know really what's, what's really going on underneath and yeah. you're not yeah. going to be taught about yeah. it. Yeah? So while it's still, it was still paperwork, yeah, there was a chance for you to sort of see through it and, yeah. and, and figure out what's going on. Yeah. Um, so um, let's, let's uh, delve into how you figure out you know, what's really being said you know, in, in legalese. So um, you know, I'm going to ask the question, what's a motor vehicle? We all think we know what a motor vehicle is. Yeah? Well, the Road Traffic Act, I'm going to have to read this off. Okay. Road Traffic Act 1988 says, uh, motor, motor vehicle is defined as a mechanically propelled vehicle adapted or intended for use on the road. Well, that sounds like a car, doesn't it? But did you notice they used the word vehicle mm. in a definition of motor vehicle? Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so let's have a look what a vehicle is. Yeah, you have to go to a legal dictionary to figure out what's, uh, what's going on. To go to a legal dictionary and look up the word vehicle, and it says includes every description of carriage or other artificial contrivance used or capable of being, being used as a means of transportation on land. Hmm, carriage. What does it mean by carriage? Okay, let's look that up. Okay, carriage, a vehicle, vehicle, <laughs> used for transportation of persons either for pleasure or business. Business? Hmm, okay. So what's transportation? Because, you know, you think you would know what these words mean, but, you know, there's, there's a definition in these legal dictionaries, so let's look it up. So what's transportation? The removal of goods or persons from one place or, um, to another by a carrier. Carrier. Mm. <laughs> carrier? What's a carrier? Okay. One who undertakes to transport persons or property from place to place by means of conveyance and with, oh, sorry, and with or without compensation. Compensation as well. It's, it's sounding like a commercial activity, isn't it? Okay, so what's an undertaking? An undertaking, a promise, engagement or stipulation um, 
uh, are made by parties to a contract. Sounding very much like a, uh, a commercial activity. So let's summarise what we've learned of what a motor vehicle is. It is every description of mechanically propelled artificial contrivance adapted or intended for use on the road, used or capable of being used as a means of removing goods and persons from one place to another by one who has promised, contracted or been engaged to transport persons or property from place to place with or without compensation. That means your car isn't a motor vehicle. A taxi, according to this definition, a taxi is a motor vehicle. A bus is a motor vehicle, according to this. Yeah? Um, any, so your car is not a motor vehicle by definition. But you see, they've hidden that definition so that you, you have to literally go all the way through it to find out what it actually means. Yeah? That's how they're tricking us. You know, they're, they're letting you assume that you know what they're talking about. Okay? So, by the same token, what is a driver? Okay? So, Black's Law Dictionary, second edition, defines a driver as one who is employed to conduct or operate a carriage. Right? Well, what's a conductor? A lessee or a person who hires the services of another. A hirer, a person hired to make a, a specific work, a contractor. Yeah? Okay, again, it's sounding very, very commercial, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so what's, a, what's an, a conductor? A person who engages to perform a piece of work for another at a stated price. Yeah? Um, so a driver is one who is employed or hires somebody to operate a motor vehicle. Are you a driver? No. no. This is how they tricked us. Um, do you, does everybody remember tax discs? Oh, yes. <laughs> right. Do you remember there were two, um, at least two um, types of tax disc? There was P and PLG. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. Do you know what PLG meant? Private, Private light Private. goods. Yeah. Was your car ever meant to be transporting light yeah. goods? No, what it was is, is again a nod to saying you're using this in a commercial, uh, commercial s uh, setting. Yeah, you're not using it as, as you know, your right to travel anywhere you like. No, you're you're acting in commerce, right? So, so you're taxing like it. Sorry. So like yes, so you're taxing it, or, or you have to follow the rules mm. of being a driver. Yeah, because now you're acting in commerce on roads. Um, so again, this is this is this is how they're tracking you. Yeah. Um, these rules don't apply to people who um, do not admit to being a driver. Does it, is there anybody on the road who doesn't admit to being a driver? What do you call those people? Travellers. 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 Oh, yeah. Travellers. They, they, they don't have tax, MOT, insurance. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Please leave them alone. Oh, yeah. Why? Because they've never ever admitted to being a driver. They're travelling. Just as you do when you get into your car and go to Tesco's, yeah? You're not, you're not operating a, a bus or, or, or driving a taxi, right? You're going, you're using your car to, to, to go and do something. You're traveling, mm. okay? There's an awful lot of difference between traveling and driving. You admit yeah. you're a driver though, yeah. now you're no longer traveling. So if yeah? we say we're traveling, they can't do anything? Well, again, well, we go back to, we go back to the, uh, the whole idea that you've got lots of evidence that says you're driving. You've got a driving license. That's evidence to say you're a driver. Yeah? You show that driving license. Right? Can't we just lose it? Can we say really bad? Lose driving license at the moment. We don't have one. No, it's, 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 you know, again, it's oh, like, um, no. right, it's, okay, if you're, if you're walking down the, um, the road or, or walking by a lake, okay, and you've got a stick in your hand, yeah, you're just playing around with a stick in your hand, right? And uh, you just happen to have a, a fishing license at home, right? Okay, a copper can say, oi. And there's no fishing here, but I'm not fishing. You've got a fishing license. Yeah, here it is. Right, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Right, doesn't matter you weren't fishing, right? You've got a fishing license. You're near a lake with fish in it, right? You've got something that could be capable of use for fishing. Got ya. It's not about being right or wrong. It's about being trapped by this system. Mm -hmm. Right, so um, does everybody know what the word traffic means? 
Exactly. <laughs> not. So most people really think the word traffic means uh, lots of cars. cars. Yeah. Lots of cars, yeah? Yeah. But there's another meaning for the word traffic. What happens when you traffic drugs? Traffic That's what yeah. Yeah. It's trade, um, isn't it? Buying and buying selling. And selling. So does the Road Traffic Act apply to you? Buying and selling no. on the road? No. 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 Again, it applies to taxi drivers, applies to bus drivers, yeah? Doesn't apply to us. Okay? Again, that's, that's how they're, they're tricking us, yeah? Um, so, there are four ways to agree to this system. There are four methods that you can, you can agree to things in this system. Right, the first way is a written contract, okay? Um, most of these contracts are hidden from you, yeah? Just like the driving license is. Yeah? You, you have no idea that you're signing a, a contract, but you do so anyway. Um, so so they're, they're mostly hidden from you. Right? Um, oh no, it's okay. Don't, 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 don't listen. I'm always cold. Don't worry. <laughs> That's why I got the big. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so, so I say most contracts are hidden from you, but a good rule of thumb is if you're signing something, it's a, it's a good chance that you're signing a contract, yeah? So be very wary about, you know, actually giving your signature away. Because your signature is very, very powerful in this world. Very powerful. It's worth an unlimited amount, okay? If you went to get a, um, a, a loan from a bank, let's say £10,000, what do they take for you, from you for that £10,000? Signature. Your signature. It's worth an unlimited amount because your signature is called manifestation of intent, right? Your signature is worth your energy that you're going to use to pay back that money, yeah? Your promise to pay, yeah? It's, it's worth an unlimited amount, okay? So whenever you're faced with a contract, always read it. Con. Yeah, exactly, yeah. But always, always, always read a contract. Yeah. Now, um, when I when I came back to England after living in America, I had to get a bank open a bank account. So um, I went to Barclays. I shouldn't have done, but I went to Barclays, and uh, I said I'd like to open a bank account. And they gave me this uh, form to fill in, right? And, I, and they said I'll just sign that and uh, we'll open your account. I said, you know what? I'm going to take this home with me. I'll come back in the morning. Yeah. So I took it home and I read through it. Okay. There are a few things I didn't like about it. Yeah. So, I crossed out what I didn't like, and I initialed it. Huh? What I should have done, and I didn't, but I should have done, um, there are a few things that I would have liked in that contract. So, I could have written in what I wanted, and then initialed it, okay? Mm -hmm. So, I, I didn't make all the changes I wanted, closed it all up, you know, folded it all back up, went into Barclays the next day, and just as they expected me to just sign it without reading it, they accepted it without reading it. Right. So a few months later, my my balance dipped under zero for a millisecond, and they said, oh, "I'm going to charge you thirty pounds for that." Yeah. I said, "No, you're not. I'm yeah. not paying it." Yeah. I said, "Well, you have to. It's, uh, it's in the contract." I said, "No, it's not." <laughs> I'm have a look. So a, a week or so later, I got a letter saying, "Oh, we're not going to charge you that thirty pounds." <laughs> Right, so that's the power you have. A contract is an agreement between two parties. Yeah, you are, have just as much power in that um, in that um, contract than the other party. Yeah, what's supposed to happen is yes, you can read the contract and go, mm, you know, I don't like this. I want this in it, and blah blah blah. And then it goes back to them. They're supposed to read it and go, oh, I'm not sure we want this, and blah blah. And it goes back to you until you both come to an agreement. Mm -hmm. That's how it's supposed to work. But they. Again, they've miseducated us mm -hmm. and told us that we have no power in this. Yeah. We just have to sign it and just get on with it, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, so, and so they, they, again, you know, they have power over us, okay? Mm -hmm. So, but, but the point is, you have power in that, all, in that arrangement, yeah? So, always use it. Always use it. Even if, even if you don't get away with it, yeah? <laughs> Even if they say, oh, hang on a second, what's this? And uh, they say, oh, no, we're not accepting that. You know, at least you try it, or, or you go somewhere else and try it, or whatever. But, but always try it. Always make sure that you, you know, if you're going to sign a contract, read it 
and, and make sure it, it's a contract that you want to accept. Okay? Um, one of the tricky things that uh, is, is on some contracts is it's called the Four Corners Rule. Okay? Anybody heard of it? The Four Corners Rule is if you, if you find a document, you get a document sent to you, and something is in a box on that document, it's not part of that document. You can ignore it, it's not part. If it's in a box in four corners, you can remove it and read the document without it. So if you combine that with the, the legalese words in that, right, you could have a document that if you're, if you're just an ordinary person who doesn't know anything, you can read it and think all sorts of things about what it's saying, but if you know about what these words mean, you're out of space or anything. Um, yeah, so, yep. Because most of the contract now, obviously, they trying to force you to sign online. How well, you can change that? Well, there's, there's, this is why. Digital signature, you mean? Yeah, yeah. This is why they're putting it online, so it stops you from being able to change yeah. it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah? So all you've got, the only thing you can do is click OK. Yeah? Yeah. This is why they're moving online, because they're, yeah, they're, no, no, no. they're slowly trying to make sure that they've got you in a box that you can't get out of. Mm. So, sometimes yeah. the conditions go on for about 200 pages. Yes. Yeah. And, and <laughs> that's okay. that's deliberate. They don't want you to read it. It's just a load of waffle. Just it could say in there that it can kill you at any time. Or they any could. <laughs> but they, they you still click again, they expect <laughs> you not to read it. Yeah? Yeah. And most people don't. Most people are like, if they even do, they'll get like the first line or two and go, oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. is there a way of getting out of it if it's online? <sighs> not really. Office. Not really. Because, do you, you know. you can request some stuff by paper if you're on You can. Contract. That is, that is, that actually is right. I've got to get student houses for the next four years. I've just signed up to one. But next mm. year, if I request, because it's all online. Yeah. If I request yeah. all the documents and contracts in paper form, would. Yes. Yeah. Yes. How about also if it's online and they say, "Oh, we can't send it to you in paper form because they do that yeah. a lot." Can you just say, "Oh, we'll print. I'll print it out." And, and send it back to you. Send it back to you. Yeah. 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 Any way you can do it that way because they said they're trying their best to close off all the um, avenues of escape mm -hmm. that you might have. Yeah, and they want to lock you in. If you can find a way to to bypass it, great. Yeah. Um, so, so, so yes, that's, that's a good idea. I didn't, I didn't sort of well, uh, remember to say. I've got a few things on my phone there. I think it was like the update for settings and stuff, but it literally says, like, agree, and you tick and then say okay, and it actually says in brackets optional, so it's optional whether you agree or not, but you can't go any further and then you tick it. Yeah, yeah, how how can that be optional? Because I can't use my phone. And, and your I phone dies. Tick to agree and yeah. Yeah. Yeah, mine's but doing it now. So it's not optional. <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> though, sometimes it is optional. Sometimes it actually is, and they the, because you're used to this thing that you know that, that you always go okay. Some of, them, some of them, some of them, some of them, and I there are sites that say, that. yeah, you have to do this to, before you can continue. Yeah. But if you say decline, it still carries on. So it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. ah, it's tra just trapping you, yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, so in that case, yeah, always try decline oh, first, yeah. and then and then I see. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so um, once you sign that agreement, now it becomes law. Now it comes under do all you say you'll do. Yeah? Now it becomes law. Okay? Um, now, the thing about a contract, it requires four things. Four things to be in place to be a, 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 a proper contract. Okay? Now, I, I, I sort of uh, reduce it to an acronym, FLEM. Okay? Ooh, yes, well, I remember it that way. <laughs> yeah. So, number one... Full disclosure, okay? So let's look at the driving license, for instance. Full disclosure means on the contract you sign, everything about that contract, all the terms and conditions, have to be on that contract. But on a driving license, the terms and conditions are the Road Traffic Act, which isn't part of the document you're signing, yeah? So it fails on full disclosure, yeah? Next one, lawful terms and conditions. Well, in this case, uh, the terms and conditions are that you give up your right to your natural right to travel, which isn't lawful. Nobody can take that away from you. Yeah, yeah. it's not lawful, so it fails on that. Yeah. yeah, E is equal consideration. So for every contract, there's two uh, two parties bring something to the table. Yeah. yeah, they have to be of equal value. Right, a natural right and a benefit privilege aren't equal. Yeah, 
One restricts you, one has gives you, you know, free access to everywhere, yeah? So, fails on equal co consideration, yeah? Mm. Last one is manifestation of intent, which means two signatures, both parties have to sign that contract, yeah? Well, your driving license only has one, yeah? You. So it fails on all four counts. It's not an enforceable contract. But again, you know, um, criminals operate the system, so they're going to say it's a valid contract, and once you've done all, once you've signed it and that, well, you're in there, and uh, you're not getting out. Mm. So when you pass your driving test now, they give you two years to send it off, don't they, to go and get your paper thing that's got your photo and that on, et cetera, et cetera, if you've got the old licence type thing? Well, like if, why is that? If you've already passed, is that then to get you into contract once you send it off so no, with your photo? That's a, <laughs> that's a, another another trick they did, because if you, if those who've got the uh, old paper for, uh, licenses before, yeah. well, when did that license expire? It hasn't yet, so I haven't sent mine off. Well, that's what I'm saying, it expired when you're 70. Yeah. Yeah? yeah, it doesn't expire. I have the old one. Yeah, right. I'm not yeah. changing it. Don't one. change it. <laughs> it says it on it. It says expires. And, it's a, yeah. and you're 70. It's unlimited. Yes, it says unlimited. Okay, it's well, on the, on the English oh, paper ones, okay, English paper okay. ones, it expires on your 70th birthday. 70th, yeah? yeah. And uh, the plastic cards of your face on it, it expires, I don't know, 10 years. 10 years, 10 years, 10 years yeah. yeah. So you have to keep going and getting a new one. So it's a, again, it's a just a. You don't have to do anything money. for it. They just want new money. Yeah. When it expires, can you not get it? Can you like not renew it? Is there a way that you can get around that? Well, effectively, you're out of the system, aren't you? Okay. Well, have, have you still got your paper one? She I never got a paper one. one. Okay, so yeah, so they they introduced yeah. it so that you couldn't get yeah, a paper exactly. one. Yeah. So yeah. now yeah. your license never, you know. Um, Ne it's never going to go um, go to the 70 years. You just have to renew it every yeah, year, yeah, exactly. every 10 years. Yeah. But so if I get to 10 years, then I don't renew it. Because well, no, it, because yeah. now they've yeah. changed yeah. it. Yeah. Now they've changed it, you, you can't get around it. Before, when you had the paper one, right, you could. You could keep your paper one, and if you even got their card, you could, you've always got the paper one that says, well, no, I've still got a driving license until, uh, till, you know, when I'm 70. Yeah? <laughs> No, I don't think they're not valid no, 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 anymore. No, no. So. It doesn't, it, they are. It's it's really if it says it on it, it's valid until 70. Then it yes, be valid. it is because that's the contract. You signed yeah. a contract yeah. back then. Yeah. 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 So, but they, so they do, you not, do you not, sorry, do you know how I know that what you said mm -hmm. is because I want to, to have my car um, repaired at the garage and I asked for a courtesy car. So they said, oh, we need your driving license. So I give him that. So he said, oh, no, what's that? That's finished. That's finished. I said, no, 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 that's not finished. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm, I'm renting cars with this thing all the time. It's not finished. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, that's not valid. That's not. I said, that is valid. Anyway, long story short, he yeah. took it. Mm -hmm. And I showed him at the end. He said, I don't understand. It's in French, whatever. I showed him at the end. It's written permanent. Mm -hmm. This is permanent. Mm -hmm. So then he took it and he was very happy with right. it. So, yeah. yeah. The point is that you signed a contract, you know, when it was a paper one, yeah, and they've got no right to re, you know, renegotiate a contract that's already been signed. So, yeah. They can if, if you agree to, to getting a, you know, a plastic one and giving up your paper one, okay, you can agree to that if you want to, mm. but, you know, I suggest you can hang on to that paper one if you want. But, excuse me, mm -hmm. what gives them the authority over us? Can we not make our own license? Well, again, you've public. We've, we've given it. Then yeah. Authority. Yeah, uh, but can we? We that wasn't a full disclosure, was it? I know. Put it full now I did that. I literally did that. I rescinded my driving license. I uh, deregistered re my car. I put my own license plate on my car, and you can go onto YouTube and see. Um, after a year, when I got pulled. By the police, yeah. who were waiting for me as it happened. Yeah. Yeah, they, were, they knew where I was going and they were waiting for me. And um, and you see how I dealt with it back then. Oh, it's, uh, yeah, but this is the point. When I first did it, I was I was driving around with my own number plate on mm -hmm. for a year. I had police behind me. Mm -hmm. I had police, you know, sort of looking at me and stuff. Yeah. Um, but and they didn't know what to do no. for a while, for a long while. Mm -hmm. And then they figured out something, and they were literally waiting for me. 
and uh, you, you know, if you go online, you'll see you'll see how I dealt with it. Um, but um, yeah, so oh, oh, where was I? Uh, did, did I start on verbal contract? No. Okay, so yeah, so the the next way is a verbal contract. Okay, so you off you often enter into a verbal contract um, by answering questions. Yeah, it's uh, if they make if they make you an offer and you agree to it. <laughs> Right? Yeah. Well, now a verbal contract's formed. Yeah. 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 So, like when I asked Jeff if I could punch him in the face, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's a, an offer of a contract, yeah. and he said yes. Okay, great. Okay, we've got a contract now. <laughs> Bam. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, an offer is made and you accept. Now, um, when I was living in the in the states, um, my wife my wife at the time was uh, stayed at home, and she got a phone call from a company who was selling or, or giving away free magazines. And they were saying things like, um, oh yeah, there's, we, we, we sort of uh, offer you lots of uh, magazines you can choose from. Right? And two of them, at least two magazines will be free to you. Yeah, there's several others that cost, you know, will cost so much. But um, do you want these free magazines? Right, so she said, uh, yeah, I want these free magazines. But what she did by saying yes to the free magazines, yeah. she also said yes to all the other magazines that weren't free. Right. And a contract was formed over the phone. And I only found out that one day I was looking at my bank statements and I was like, where's this 60 dollars coming from? Mm. And it turns out that we were getting all these magazines and we were paying for them. And she said she thought she was, she was getting them free. Yeah. yeah? It, took a, it was a nightmare to get, to get out of that. Mm. But uh, yeah, a contract is, a verbal contract is, is, is a binding contract. Mm. So um, these companies are taking advantage of it. So um, do not answer questions. Yeah, yeah. Does that work opposite if you ask them questions and they agree? Have they accidentally entered into a contract with you? Um, yes, it works that way as well. Because, again, if you look at that video, if you find that video online where I get stopped by the police, right, the, the, the cop, there's a cop who, um, who asks me, can you get out of the car, please? And I said, um, well, I'm happy to get out of the car, but I don't work for free. If you want me to get out of the car, it's going to cost you £20,000. Do you still want to get out of the car? You want me to get out of the car? And he said, yeah. I said, okay, hold on a second. <laughs> so I wrote out an invoice right, for 20,000 yeah. pounds. I said, could you sign this? He signed it. <laughs> <laughs> on camera, yeah? So now, I, I, didn't, I didn't pursue it because, you know, life's too short. Okay, so, but I've still got it, though. I've still got it, though, yeah? And I can activate this at any time because it's an agreement, yeah? yeah. So now... A million people, because a million people have seen this video now, yeah. a million people have witnessed that I made him an offer, him the man, not the policeman, yeah. I made him an offer, right, to get out of the car for £20,000. He accepted the offer, I complied, right, he hasn't paid yet. I can go to a small claims court and say, look, look, you know, he made me an offer on, on camera, everyone's seen it, yeah, here's the, here's the bill, here's the invoice. Yeah, he owes me. Do that. Sorry. I think we need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. He's just accepted them. Again, there's that and a few other things. Um, I could, I had the choice. I could have spent the next two years um, chasing stuff and doing all this paperwork, or I could get all the other things that I wanted really? to do and, and not have the hassle of uh, having the police victimise me yeah, because I'm having a gun. It's more the pleasure as well, knowing that you did it and it was that easy that you're yeah. kind of using it, then it actually just eats up well, themselves. Well, here's the other so. thing, right? Um, I was going to get a, um, a what's known as a commercial lien because um, they, they took my car and on my car has a notice that says, I charge, if you take my car away, I charge £75 per hour. Okay. Uh, you know, and so on. So I was actually um, racking up the charges, and I, um, I, I could have again, I could have taken a commercial lien out on the police, okay. And once you get this this thing called a commercial lien um, matured, it means you can take goods to the value of what you're owed. So what the plan was, and I, again, I had to, I, I thought about it really hard, and then decided, no, I'm not going to do that. The plan was. Because they owed me in the in the millions at that point, I was going to go to Hertfordshire where this happened, um, with with a load of uh, car clamps and start clamping police cars <laughs> uh, to get my goods. Because what happened? There's a very good guy Taylor who um, got a commercial lien out against his uh, his council, okay, 
And what he did was go, take a removals van to the council offices and started removing furniture out of the, uh, out of the council offices. And the council were like, oh, look, shut. They shut their offices, Dolphy's doors, you know, halfway through the day to stop him taking stuff. They called the police. He showed them the commercial lane. The police said, we can't do anything. So the council said, shut, shut everything. Don't let him in. Don't let him in. And, uh, and yeah, so, so Guy said, get the commercial lane. So again, I was going to clamp police cars. And I had a friend who had a removals company. So he's going to start taking these police cars and then line them up outside my house. So that's going to be a YouTube video. But I thought, you know what? If I did that, every policeman in the country yeah. is going to be targeting me. Yeah. You know, and I thought, you'd you know, never get away with anything else. Yeah, again, life's too short. You know. <laughs> right. So, um, uh, so yeah, there's a video. Um, as I said, don't answer, don't answer questions. If you're going to answer, if you're going to answer questions, answer them with another with another question. Okay. There's a video to go and watch. It's a, it's difficult to remember this. Remember this. It's uh, called. Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. Yeah. And put the word questions after it when you search for it on YouTube. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, so funny. Yeah. it's called Rosencrantz <laughs> and Guildenstern are dead. It's questions. A type of a play, isn't it? Yeah. But put the word questions after it when you search for it. What you'll find is a video of um, two guys playing a game of questions. Okay, on a tennis court, which is uh, very fitting actually. So. It starts with, um, do you want to play questions? How do you play that? Yeah. You ask questions. Statement, one love. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you see, you, you've got to answer yeah. a question yeah. with, with a question. question. And if you make a statement, yeah. you lose, you drop the ball. Yeah? Yeah. So it is like tennis. You know? yeah. First question, I serve. Yeah? Um, you, you answer the question, you hit it back. If the person makes a statement, they drop the ball. You know, this is where we get. Words like in in legal terms, serve, service, yeah. The ball is in your court, yeah. yeah? So I've asked you a question. Now the ball's in your court. What are you going to do with it? Yeah. yeah. So if you can find that video and watch it because it gives you training on how to deal with these uh, with police, you know, or, or any legal thing um, where you know they're asking you questions. Okay. Um, you can't sort of hesitate, you can't use rhetoric, you can't um, uh, repeat yourself. It's got to be like natural language and natural conversation. But you have to always uh, answer a question with a question. You should play that with your kids. Yeah. 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 To each other and play it. Mm. So um, another way, the third way to uh, agree to a contract is consent implied by your actions. Okay. So you can imply your entering the contract in contract by your 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 actions. Yeah. So um, if a stranger comes up to you and says, "What's your name?" And what's your name? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. your name? Okay. But if you if you answer right right to so somebody demanding your name, yeah. well now you've given them authority yeah. right to be somebody who can demand your name. You you answer them. Yeah, because you've, you, your actions um, suggest that they have authority to ask you questions. Yeah. Mm. yeah? If, a, if, a, if a police a policeman says to you, um, or you, get back, or stand over there, yeah? Mm. And you stand over there, yeah. well, you've, you've given them the authority yeah. over you to command you to do things. Yeah. yeah? Remember, a policeman is exactly the same as you. If you haven't done anything wrong, he's got no power over you whatsoever. He's just a normal citizen, you know, I don't want to use that word, but a normal person, no, I can't even use that word. A normal man, just like you, yeah, and he has got no, no authority over you unless you give it to him. And you can give it to him by following his orders, okay? So, um, one of the things you can say if somebody, uh, tries to order you to do something, a uh, common way to answer it is, am I obliged to follow your yeah. order? Am I obliged to stand over there? Yeah. yeah? Now, Ball's in his court now. <laughs> yeah? Um, and so he's got, to, he's got to prove the obligation for you to follow his orders. Yeah? Which he can't. Um, another way to do it is, is that, an, is that a request or is that an order? 
Well, if it's a request, you can politely decline a request. Yeah, yeah it's just a request. But if it's an order, well, let's change the setting. What happens if you order a Big Mac at McDonald's? What's the next thing you have to do? You pay for it. Yeah. Orders are chargeable. So just like I said to that copper, yeah, I charge twenty thousand pounds. Yeah, you can you can, you can make up your own charges. I, I charge fifty thousand. I'm sorry, I'm very expensive. You should have checked that out before trying to order, engage orders with me. But you know that's not what I charge. You know, do you still want to want me to uh, do what you just as you, uh, do as you say? Um, so yes, orders are chargeable. Yeah. So it's, it's always better if you've got like a, a handy invoice pad with you so you, can, <laughs> so you can make out an invoice. But as I said, orders are chargeable. Nobody can actually yeah, yeah. order you to do anything because, again, one step below the creator, everyone's on that level. Yeah? So nobody can really order you to do anything unless you agree to give them authority over you. Well, that, that, contract, <laughs> that contract there is with that individual, isn't it? Yes. It's not respective of who they're working for. Well, um, again, if, you, if you're if uh, you contracting with an agent of the Crown, you're, you're contracting with the Crown. Oh, okay. Yeah, if you ain't, uh, ain't... Like, when you wrote that invoice out, was that to the Crown? Or that was to him, because he, he want you know... Yes, he was acting as a policeman, but I had this, I made an arrangement with him, the man. Right. Yeah? Because he's asking me, so... Yeah. So... Do you want to do that? Is that what you want to do? Yeah. So the police isn't going to get involved in that. They're going to sort of wash their hands of it. You know, like, we didn't, we didn't authorize that. You know, he signed his hand to it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, um, so the the fourth way to agree to something is called tacit acquiescence. Yeah, it means silence. Yeah, you're agreeing by silence. There's a there's a legal maxim in law called um, that says. He who, can, who, he who is silent consents. Yeah. Yeah? So if, if um, yeah, uh, we're standing here and, uh, and Jeff is doing something illegal over it or un unlawful over here, and me and, and Mike are standing watching, right? because we're silent, we're letting go, we're, we're, we're part of that crime now. We're, we've joined in because our silence, we're accepting it. Yeah. You, know? you can't be, remain silent. You know, if, if something if something's offered to you, especially if something's offered to you, and you remain silent, right? That silence is taken as acceptance. Okay. Does yes. That, well, the sense is formed as well that if we don't if we didn't, didn't fill it in, does that mean that we've acquiesced to it? Well, no. Well, okay. When you get that census form, mm. um, is your name householder? Occupier, no. Or occupier, no. no. Okay, you know it's illegal to uh, open mail that's not addressed to you. Okay, right, okay, So, yeah, who's this? I'm, I'm a householder. You determine if you have the right to remain silent. Yeah. Exactly. To coerce you into being silent. The thing is that this again, this is a this is a trick. This is a, a game. Okay, mm. there are certain times that you've got this right to remain silent. It's, mm. it's good to use it. Mm. But other times, that silence will trap you. Mm. So if an offer is made to you, mm. being silent means you're accepting it, yeah? But if, uh, mm. if they want you to confess to something, yes, you can, you can literally remain silent and not, mm. not um, you know, sort of inform on yourself, okay? Yeah. Um, so judges use this trick all the time, okay? A judge will make a pronouncement, mm. you know? I'm charging you with, or I'm doing this or, or that or the other. And what they'll do is they'll pause. And they might hide the pause by shuffling papers or, or looking for somebody in the court or, or doing something. But he's pausing for your response, for your objection. Yeah? And if you don't object, he's going to move on. Right? Accepting your silence as consent. The government do exactly the same thing. So let's imagine today's the fifth, well, it's the 17th, right? They might say, from the 24th, mm. we're going to implement masks, uh, mandatory masks in shops. From the 24th. Yeah. Gives you a lead up to it. Yeah, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. That time, that period of, of, of waiting mm. is your opportunity to object. Yeah. And nobody objects, so they go, right, Tom, then we're going to do that. Yeah? That's how it works. Yeah, but if, if, if out of millions, only let's say 100 objects, 
Does, does he does he do anything? Or? Yeah, how many does it take for them to actually consider the objection? Well, again, we're we're talking with criminals who uh, <laughs> <laughs> expect you don't know anything. So um, I, I can't remember the number, but um, there's a number. If if somebody if somebody writes a letter to a politician, right? And I, I think it's either 30 or 300, I can't remember. But if a, a, I think it's 300. If a, somebody writes a letter to a politician, they have to assume that for the, every one letter, there, there's 300 other people. It might even be 3,000, I don't know. There's 300 other people who, are go, who would have written that letter, but for some reason didn't. Yeah. So if 1,000 people, you know, right? So, you know, 300,000 people, yeah, assumed to have written that letter. Yeah, so so yeah. Um, supposedly, if you get enough uh, people who who are objecting, they have to literally multiply that to, to figure out what the uh, the feeling of the whole country. But again, we're dealing with criminals who have an agenda. So the you know was it uh, one point two million people came out against the uh, Iraq War? I'm just going to say that use that exact. Well, I think it was more than that. You know, yeah. more than that march through London. Right, but they went ahead and did it anyway. Yeah, we're yeah. talking about we're talking about sort of criminals in government. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, they also use it with council tax. Okay, every single year they make an offer to you yeah. to no, accept they council tell you, tax. They tell you what it's going to be. Well, um, do you know where that offer is? Does anybody get the local paper? Not anymore. Not anymore. But that local paper is still out there. It doesn't matter if nobody gets it, but. Every, I think it's March, every March in the local paper, the government or the local council put in, you know, this is what we're going to do with council tax this year. Yeah. And they've got all sorts of charts and, and this is what we're going to give the police and that, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. That's an offer. And they're waiting for objections. And nobody objects. So, okay, you're going to get your council tax next year. Yeah? But it's, if you, if one person objects, can, can that person... Does that person have to pay it or not? If they object and say no, I don't they'll just it. ignore it anyway. If if everybody, well, let's give you an example of how it, it actually did work. The government, if you remember, said um, just before the vaccines rolled out, right? Nurses and frontline workers were going to be the first ones to get this vaccine. Do you remember that? Yeah. 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 Did they get it? No. No. no the government said, later on said, uh, "We've changed our mind. Mm -hmm. We're not going to do that." Yeah. No, they, they didn't change their mind, the nurses, and that said, no, we're not doing it. Mm. Yeah. Literally, on mass, they said, no. <laughs> and, and literally, they had to back off, yeah. because they objected, on mass. Okay? So it does work, right? but the government aren't going to let you know it works. Mm. Yeah? So, um, so, talking about the police, okay? Now, again, we're, we've, we've got the, uh, the real world and clown world, yeah? yeah. So, in real world... We didn't have police, right? Mm. We had constables, mm. yeah? The old Dixon and Doc Green type people, you know? The, uh, the, the sort of the best of us, you know? The upright, uh, good people mm. would become constables, yeah? yeah? Their job was to uphold the law and keep the peace, yeah? yeah? They were the Bobby on the beat, yeah? Everyone in the community knew who that, that, that Bobby was. Mm. Yeah, and they knew everybody in the community. Yeah, they would be seen as uh, as somebody you could rely on, somebody you could trust, somebody who would help you if you needed it. Mm. You don't get that now, do you? No. no. Right? That's because we don't have constables anymore. They very slowly, boiling frog styley, changed the constable to a police constable, PC. Yeah, and then they changed it from police constable to police officer, policy enforcer, somebody who enforces the law, okay? Very different from a, from a police constable or a constable, yeah? yeah? But these people have exactly the same powers as you do. They're just people that we pay to do this job that we're supposed to do 24 hours a day or, or for their, their, their working time, okay? They've got exactly the same powers as you have. Yeah? They don't have any power over you unless you've done something wrong, unless you've committed a crime. Right? Not committed an offence. Yeah? They've only got power over you if you've committed a crime. 
Again, the police are not taught the difference anymore, mm. so everything is a crime to them. Yes. So, um, and, and you might have heard, you know, police don't get involved in civil matters. It's true. Mm. They're, not, they're not allowed mm. to get involved in anything but, but crimes, mm. yeah? So the Coronavirus Act isn't a crime. There's no victims involved, mm. yeah? It's a civil matter. So the police have got no jurisdiction, you know, uh, they can report you to certain authorities because you've, you've uh, violated a statute, so they can report you, but they can't, they've got no power to do anything, you know, apart from report you. And okay? lock you up. They, can, they do lock you up, don't they? Ah, no, but <coughs> what they do, right, is so, because uh, they want to report you, in order to report you, they need you to identify yourself. They need name, date of birth, and an address. Okay. Before they, they don't, before they arrest you. Or... No. Well, this is the thing. They need to do, to get that information so they can report you and then start process against you. Yeah. If you don't give them that, they will threaten to arrest you. Mm -hmm. Right. And sometimes they will if you give them the authority to do that. They will arrest you and bully you into giving your name, address, and, and date of birth. Okay. Mm -hmm. They use all sorts of tricks to, to, to get you to give that information. They might even, um, maybe from your fingerprints or something, pull up a record, right? They still haven't got you, right? They've got a record that looks like you, right? And it might, might have, yeah, it just it might have your name on it or something, but it looks like you. And what they'll do is they'll show you the, the, the record and go, see, we've got you. And, and they're expecting you to confess. They need you to confess to it. They can't just say, oh, yeah, oh, we've got you, right? We've got, and they say, we can, we can start. No, they need you to confess. And the, again, just like I, I tricked a few people around here, right? They will trick you into confessing, right? Um, <clears throat> so police... Oh, sorry, my voice is gone. <clears throat> so police need... Um, they've got, a, they've got a, a flow chart they have to follow, right? Oh. It's the, uh, the four E's, okay? It is um, engage, explain, encourage, enforce, okay? So they can't just jump to enforce. They have to go through the steps. Mm -hmm. Right, so those who uh, were there for the uh, Rice versus Connolly thing, right? Yeah. <coughs> well, you saw that... As soon as uh, the policeman started to speak, I said, Rice versus Colin, 1966. Yeah. Every time he opened his mouth, Rice versus Colin, 1966. Hello, hi. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm just Rice versus Connolly, 1966. Rice versus Connolly, 1966. Okay, come Rice versus Connolly, 1966. Let's try and get everyone over there. Let's try and get. Go on, we just need one person videoing. Go on. Rice versus. I didn't let him finish a sentence, right? So, so he tried to any, anything he tried against me. Rice versus Connolly, 1966. Yeah, we all joined in. They weren't allowed to ask any questions. They weren't allowed to engage with me. Yeah. So they couldn't start the first part of their flowchart. So they couldn't proceed. Simple as that. Right. 
doesn't matter what you say as such. If you don't allow them, you can even walk away if you want. Some of them, they're persistent, they'll follow you, and, and again, try and bully you, yeah? But uh, you don't have to engage with them if you've not done anything wrong, yeah. okay? As I said, you have, you have the right to remain silent in that instance, yeah? They might disagree with you and say, no, you, you, you know, that's obstruction if you don't talk to me, yeah? But again, Rice versus Conley is that case law that says you don't have to speak to them, yeah. okay? And if they try and argue with you, you can ask them, what is the first line of the police caution if you were to arrest me? Well, you don't have to say anything. Well, that's basically the right to remain silent. Yeah. So, do you have the right to remain silent, you know, only after they arrest you? Or do you have it before? Well, actually, you always have it. Yeah. So they can't arrest you for not speaking, right? Because, because that's the first line of the police caution when they arrest you. Yeah. So, so, yeah, you can tie them up in knots with that, okay? Um, so if, if somehow they, they've uh, gained authority from you and they arrest you, your best course of action is to say nothing. Or <coughs> Rice versus Connolly, uh, 1966, no comment. Yeah? Just, say, just give them nothing. The most they can do, right, this is again, as long as you've not done anything wrong, the most you can do, they can do is keep you in a cell for 23 hours and 50, 59 minutes. Three hours? Three days now, isn't it? It's gone up. They have to apply for it. They have to apply for yeah. it, but, but, uh, but generally... Going straight off the cuff, 24 hours. Otherwise, I'll apply but, but the point is that if, you, if, you're not, if they've got no basis of, of holding you there, except for trying to bully you into giving your name, address and details and stuff, yeah? 20, 23 hours, 59 minutes, yeah? Then they have to let you go, okay? And... Arrest without charge is assault. Arbitrary arrest is yeah. assault. Yeah. Yeah. Um, false imprisonment is also yeah is, is a charge you can lay against them. Yeah. Right? It's a serious offence. Very serious offence. Misconduct in public office. Yeah, because they're acting beyond the scope of their office. Yeah, that misconduct in public office carries a life sentence. Mm. Yeah, we're talking serious charges. Yeah, so. Um, so you do have power against the police. Yeah. Um, so, the main thing to remember is don't be intimidated by television shows. Mm -hmm. yes. There's a reason why there's so many t yeah. police shows on television. Oh, I've always said that. Yeah. Yeah. Every other bloody programme is yeah. about, yeah. look at the police kicking this door in here. Exactly. Yeah. They're there, they're, those shows are there to program you, program you to believe yeah. the that police can do stuff they can't. Okay. Well, and now they do because most people think they've got the power to do so. Yeah. Charge them to my door. If you are, if you, if you hold them to the law, they'll, they'll have to think twice before doing it. They just know that everybody. No, most people don't know the law, right? Most people will, will just assume they can do it, so they get away with it. With um, someone else owning your property and police entering. Do you have the right to say no or do the police? Because we've had that in the hall. So that's again. So if someone else owns a property you live into, like you're renting or something, because we've had that in the halls where someone had a party and the police showed up and the security in the halls let them into the actual flat. They said they, they said that they were breaking the law because of not social distancing, but said it'd be too much paperwork to fill in, so they weren't going to charge them. Right. Uh, well, the, all they've done is intimidate a security guard mm -hmm. into into let you know to giving him them well, I think authority. The security guard offered it to them. Well, there you go. That's all that's happened. Yeah. yeah? Exactly. If the security guard, you know, knew his stuff yeah. and knew what was going on, he could say, well, you know, what's uh, what's your authority for doing this? And yeah. you know, I don't, you know, what's your reasonable articulable suspicion of uh, of wrongdoing? Is yeah. there an injured party? What's going on? You know. Yeah. If he knew his stuff. Then they could, you could have stopped them at the door, yeah. Um, so uh, yes, again, if you've not done anything wrong um, and not committed a crime, right, they've got no power over you. If they do anything, right, if they want to search you, for instance, they have to have something called reasonable, articulable suspicion. Yeah, they've got to be able to articulate, you know, a reasonable suspicion of wrongdoing. Yeah, mm -hmm. they can't just say, yeah, I want to search you because you look shifty. That's not a reasonable suspicion. Yeah, they need to, to be able to uh, explain to you exactly, you know, why they're doing it. They can't most of the time. So when they say about stopping, like, you want to, stop you to search your car, there's no reason to suspect you have 
Well, they're going to have to actually articulate that suspicion. So even if they say we have reason to suspect we have... Yeah, so what is the reason? What is, your, what is your reason for suspicion? <coughs> they have to explain that. They have to also explain what they expect to find. Yeah? Um, and, and, yeah, so, so literally, they, most of the time, they're just saying, you know, we're just going to throw our weight around, we just want, we're gonna, we want to search your car or whatever, mm. yeah? They haven't got that power unless you give it to them. Does that also apply to the border force, or is that a separate entity? Border force, so... Yeah, for, like, searching your vehicle. <clears throat> uh, okay. Because that happens quite regularly. Again, um, they're offering a service, right, to stop you at the border and, uh, and, and, and check your car, that's the service they offer. Yeah, and uh, it's like an adhesion contract. It's like the contract I've got on the wall there. Yeah, you take it or leave it, yeah? Um, have you re do you recognize this, this from somewhere else, this, this contract? Uh, no, no. Have you ever got it, parked your car in a car park? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Somewhere in that car park is yeah. a notice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. By parking here, you agree to the following yeah, terms. Yeah. Cool. yeah, it's an adhesion contract, take it or leave it, yeah? yeah. So again, Border Patrol, well, they're offering a service, take it or leave it. You don't have to come through here, but if you're gonna come through here, you use our service, yeah? yeah? So, um, so, yeah, so um, dealing with police, if they want, to, they want to try and engage with you, yeah, you've got Rice versus Connolly, 1966. Yeah. You've also got um, uh, Neil versus DPP, 2021, which was basically upheld, upheld Rice versus Connolly, yeah? So that's another one. You can say, I don't answer questions. That's yeah. it. Mm -hmm. End of story. Yeah. They can ask you a question. I don't answer questions. Don't ask questions. That's it. You can say, I don't understand. Or yeah, you can, can but, that, but it still opens them up to asking you more questions and trying to track you some other way. You say, I don't answer questions. Yeah. Okay. That's it. They can't ask you any more questions. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and also, you've got to be persistent because they'll, be, they'll keep trying. Just like the... The, the police with Rice versus Connolly, they just kept trying to engage with me, yeah. and you have to be persistent. Don't go past that point, yeah? Don't let them go past that point, mm. yeah? So if, if you have to say the same thing over and over and over and over and over again, just say it. I don't yeah. answer questions. I don't answer questions. Yeah. It's asking, I don't answer questions, yeah? yeah? Um, another powerful one is, am I under arrest or am I free to go? Okay, so what they're doing is they're pretending to uh, arrest you. They're pretending to detain you, yeah? yeah? A detention is the same as an arrest almost, yeah? So they've got no power to detain you. They've got no power to arrest you unless you've done something wrong, yeah, okay? Yeah. So, um, so essentially, they're pretending to arrest you or detain you, yeah? Yeah, yeah? But if you take away that pretense, you know, am I under arrest or am I free to go? Right? Well, they've got to give you an answer, one or the other, yeah? Mm -hmm. But they want to keep you there to try and get you talking to, so they can arrest you, yeah? Yeah. So, am I under arrest or am I free to go? Right? So, so yeah, it, 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 it sort of limits them to a yes or no answer, a sort of black and white choice. And eventually they're going to have to say, oh yeah, you're free to go, yeah? yeah. yeah. Uh, or they're going to have to arrest you. Yeah. But unless you've given them something, they've got nothing to base it on. Therefore, it's an unlawful arrest, it's a impris false imprisonment, it's an assault, okay? Mm. Or the, the last thing you can do is play questions. Mm -hmm. Again, unless you're, uh, you're very skilled at it, I wouldn't go down that route because <laughs> they can catch you, catch you out like I've caught people out today. Yeah. Mm. Okay? Um, so, dealing with debt collectors, okay? okay. Again, don't be intimidated by t TV shows. What's that TV show? Can't pay, take it away or something. Yeah, yeah, another, one. another one. It's there to show you these people have got powers and you can't stand against them. Right? It's not true. Yeah? A debt collector is a third party interloper into your private affairs. Yeah? It's just some bloke coming up to you on the street and going, you owe me 20 quid. Pay up. What do you say? Yes. Prove it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Prove it. Yeah. Prove you know, who, who the hell are you? <laughs> you know, he might say, well, yeah, you, you owe John, um, you owe John, I'm quick, yeah, so uh, I'm collecting for John. Where's the proof of that? Exactly. John. Exactly. <laughs> well, okay. No, John, you could, you could.
could owe John 100, you know, 100 quid, yeah? But he's coming up to you and saying, yeah, I'm, I'm voting for John. Prove it. Uh, that's John. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's Give me the And we do have a poll device. Oh, yeah, don't say that. Oh, wow, okay. That better not be my tap. <laughs> so, so well, what happens when it comes from the high court? They always say it comes from the high court, don't they? They don't say that, but there, there aren't, there literally aren't court bailiffs anymore. Okay, they're all debt collecting companies. They might call themselves bailiffs. They might have, you know, very impressive looking letter heading and stuff, but they're just debt collectors. Okay. Um, right. Yes, they've got no power to compel you to do anything at all. It's just a stranger coming up to you and saying, you owe me money. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, and they can't come into your house either. They can't come into your house unless you open the door to them. Right? As soon as you open the door to somebody, what you're implying is letting them in. Same way you open oh, can only yeah. let vampires in by inviting them. Yes, exactly. Like yes. <laughs> Literally, if you open the door, the implication is you're letting them in. That's, as soon as you do that, now they can put their foot in the door right, and, and stop you from closing that door because you've already implied you're letting them in. So one of the things you can do against that is there's a, a notice, you can search for one online, but it's called a Notice of Removal of Implied Right of Access. Okay. Opening the door is implying you're giving them the right to access your property because you're opening that door. Yeah. Mm. Um, if you specifically remove that, that implication, yeah. it's gone. They can't use that. Okay. So the notice of a, a removal of implied right of access, you put it either near your front door or better still on your front gate if you've got one before you get into the, in, onto the property. Yeah. It's telling them that you know, if you feel you've got um, you've got uh, an implied right of access, I'm I'm specifically removing it. Yeah, mm -hmm. you do not have access to this. If you try to, inf you know, um, inf uh, infract what's the word on? Infringe. Infringe. If you're trying to infringe this, right, mm -hmm. then I charge the following fee schedule. Mm -hmm. Right, and then you can start charging, right? Yeah, and I saw a video. They somebody did that to the police as well. Yeah. You can you can specify anybody yeah. that you don't they want. They want their property as soon as they go through the gate, aren't they? And yeah. Getting charged. Again, it's an addiction <laughs> contract. Yeah? yeah. You're putting that contract up there, and take it or leave it, right? If you want to, if you want to break this, there's there's fees that are attached to it. So, yeah, feel free. You know. Yeah, they got them to sign something through the window and everything. Well, I yeah. saw that. Yeah, it was really good. So so you know if you've got a debt collector <clears throat> come to the door, even if the police come to the door and you you haven't done anything, open the window. What do you want? Yeah? That takes away, again, takes away the implied, you're letting them in. Yeah? Go from a top, a, a top window. Go, well, yeah, what do you want? Yeah. Here, Donnie, yeah. not the door. Yeah, not the door. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so, the other thing about uh, a debt collector, this is how they work. Let's say um, you borrowed a uh, £1,000 from the bank, okay? And um, you've stopped paying it, right? A debt collector will go to the bank and say, have you got any debts uh, outstanding? Oh yeah, there's uh, Mike Mason. Yeah, he's got a thousand pounds. He's, uh, he's <coughs> an goes, Okay, oh, we'll buy that for a tenner. Yeah. Mm. And the bank goes, yeah, yeah. okay, we'll have that. Right? So now, debt collector goes, oh, Mike, uh, you owe us a thousand pounds. Right, and they'll bully you, they'll send some big guys out. <laughs> yeah, you're a thousand pounds, you know? <laughs> yeah. And they'll try and bully you to, to, to hand over a thousand pounds plus their fees, yeah? For a ten pound outlay. So for them, it's a very, very lucrative business. And they will use all the tricks in the book to get you to, to agree, yeah? And one of the ways they get you to agree is they might say, you know, Mike, just, just pay us a pound a month. That's about a month. Mm. Yeah. And you rented in. So now yeah. you've contracted yeah. by your actions. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you agree that you owe them something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now they're going to come after you for the full amount. Yeah. Because you've now um, entered into agreement with them. Yeah. Okay? Um, the point is, right, because they've gone to the bank or, or whoever it is and paid for that for that debt, they've bought that debt. Mm. So it's already paid. That debt is paid off. <laughs> 
because the bank has accepted £10 for that debt. So what you can say, and I'll, I'll go to the letter actually, 